Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I'm Rohit Paratkar. This is the new Aston Martin DB12. It's certainly dressed in a better shade of green than I am. And believe me, more than these photos, more than these videos, the car in the flesh just looks gorgeous. The imagery just doesn't do justice to it. Now, for those of you who know your cars well, this car was shown globally a little while back and Aston Martin has already opened up its order books here in India with prices starting at rupees 4.59 crore that's before you start ticking stuff on the options list now this is an evolution of the DB11 it rolls on the same wheelbase also has a similar engine but that's not where the story ends the story is much larger than that let's take a closer look like I said, it is an evolution of the DB11. And when you look at the side profile, some of those hints are clearly visible. Like the big wet that you see extending from the wheel arch, that is again carried over from the DB11. It also bears the Aston Martin lettering on it. But when you move to the front, you start seeing the difference in the details. Like for example, the grille is now larger than the DB11. It still has those six veins but it looks a little bit larger. The logo also looks a little bit larger. The headlight detailing is different too, but it's classic Aston Martin. The overall face is immediately noticeable as an Aston Martin. You will not mistake it for something else. In the headlights, you see these six modules which act like the DRLs and they also turn into the turn blinkers. I also like these textures that you see right here. And then when you look closely at the lens of the projector lamps, you can see the same textures reflecting in them. And there's of course the matrix LED technology as well. The detailing in the turn blinkers, the DRLs, etc. That is also something that is worth noticing. The shape, the silhouette of the car, everything is typical Aston Martin. And under that long hood is 4 liter bi turbo V8 engine sourced from Mercedes AMG. But in the DB12, it puts out 680 PS of power and 800 Newton meters of torque. That's more power and torque than the DB11 V12. That's also the reason why there is no V12 with the DB12. It goes from 0 to 100 in 3.6 seconds and the top speed is 325 kilometers an hour. So in all respects, it is better than the DB11 V12. Now, continuing with the design at the rear, this is familiar territory too. The C-shaped taillights, the Aston Martin logo, all of that is again typical Aston Martin. At the bottom, you get these twin exhaust pipes and a very beautifully sculpted rear diffuser. There's also a retractable spoiler in the boot lid. When you move over to the side profile, again, unmistakable Aston Martin lines, beautiful coupe shape. But what you will also notice probably is a slightly larger wheel size. Compared to the DB11's 20 inches, you now get 21 inch standard rims on the DB12. You also get mixed tire sizes, a 275 section at the front and a 325 section at the rear. The larger wheels also get you larger brakes, 400 millimeter brakes up front with six piston calipers, 360 millimeter brakes at the rear with four piston calipers. Also take a note of the tires. These are the Michelin Pilot Sport S5 or PS5, but yeah, nothing to do with PlayStation here. These are essentially tires that are in a way bespoke for the Aston Martin as well, because this is a Grand Tourer and these tires come with foam lining on the inside to reduce road noise. So the road noises are curved quite well. That was one complaint that some of the owners of the DB11 had that there are quite a few road noises coming in, tire noises coming in, and that is something that they've addressed with these PS5S tires from Michelin. In terms of the grip, they should be great. We'll only find out when we drive the car. Another little change that they've made is to the width of the mirrors. You can see that it is slightly narrower now. So that not only makes it better aerodynamically, but also reduces the wind noise, says Aston Martin. So that's another little change. Now this, of course, is a Grand Tourer. Despite its 2 plus 2 coupe configuration, this is something that people will use for Grand Touring. Aston Martin says this is more of a Super Tourer. So let's check out the boot. The boot switch is on the driver's side door pad. And you have to bend a little bit to open it. And this is the kind of boot space that you get. Not the biggest of boots for a 2 plus 2 coupe, of course, but the overall size 
is decent for those bespoke Aston Martin bags. You can get a good look at what the kind of space is. It's a completely flat floor. The loading lip is also not too high. You get space for knickknacks on the sides. The seats don't go down, of course, but with the low loading lip, Loading all the luggage shouldn't be a problem. You won't have to take too much effort. Those bespoke bags can easily fit in there. Now, if you talk about the interiors, this is a 2 plus 2 cabin, which means you get space for two adults in the front and, well, two kids in the back. Strictly two kids, not even teenagers, but that's how 2 plus 2 coupes are. But in terms of the design of the dashboard, this is now a fresh design. You get this floating center console. Looks quite good. And all the switch gear, is unique it doesn't feel like it's come from a mercedes-benz including the infotainment it doesn't feel like a mercedes-benz unit that has been reskinned this is in fact a bespoke unit done by aston martin and all the materials that you see in the car all the switch gear everything feels premium expensive shouts luxury so it's a good looking interior of course and you can also customize the upholstery to your liking now as i mentioned earlier the wheelbase of this car is the same as that of the DB11, so it rolls on a similar wheelbase. However, in terms of the suspension, there are certain behavioral changes that Aston Martin has engineered. Now, it's still a double wishbone suspension, adaptive dampers, you get four driving modes as well, wet for, of course, the brick weather. Then you have the Sport and Sport Plus modes and also the GT mode. So that's not only going to make changes to the powertrain, but it's also going to change the suspension behavior to an extent. But the whole idea that Aston Martin had behind the chassis or the suspension behavior uh, was to make the chassis more rigid and the suspension more pliant for different road conditions. So how that behaves on the Indian roads is something that we will find out when we uh, drive this car. But in terms of the engine, I've already told you that it is a more powerful engine now. It still is mated to the 8-speed ZF transmission, which is rear mid-mounted. It also uses a carbon fiber prop shaft. But the gearbox has different ratios now. And uh, the behavior of the gearbox is also changed a little bit is what uh, Aston Martin tells us. Now, I have not driven the DB11 extensively or anything to be able to really draw parallels in that uh, regard. But it will be a great drive in the DB12 to find out exactly how good this car is. Does it live up to those super tourer credentials and what gives it those credentials to begin with? So that is something that we are definitely intrigued to find out. So do let us know uh, everything that you uh, feel about the Aston Martin DB12. We'll be more than intrigued to find out. Ooh.